Right then guys, uh, X58 overclock. Next stage is we need to get prepared for the sub-zero temperatures. Now the problem with sub-zero temperatures is it can create uh, a lot of condensation. If you imagine just blowing up against a uh, cold window, um, you get the condensation form. That's A because you've obviously got moisture in your breath, but B because of the difference in temperatures. And obviously there's moisture in air anyway, that's what humidity is. So what where we're going to have very, very cold temperatures, there is a good chance of condensation forming on the heat sinks and running down the side of the um, uh, the CPU part itself. Basically, anywhere that there's uh, a difference in temperature, which, let's face it, when we're going to have a pot that could be down as low as minus 85 degrees, I say down as low, that's about as low as you'll get with uh, dry ice, uh, it's blatantly going to be colder than the rest of the room, so there's a you know a very good chance, if not a dis, you know it's going to happen. It's going to get a, a form of a dew or condensation, whatever you want to call it. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to do all around the CPU area. The cold shouldn't spread too much because I'm not going ridiculously low with temperatures, um, but I'm going to build up little bridges up against the edges of the heat sink so any uh, condensation that does happen to fall down should be able to run down on top of the putty which I've got a ball here that I've been playing with trying to get it warm um, and what we're going to do is we're going to push it all in and around the heat sink make the, little, uh, make the little lip push it all in around the CPU socket and around the outside the north bridge as well may even go over the first dim slot as well just because that the CPU is quite close to the um, first dim slot. I mean, if I put the dice pot on top of this, you'll see that it is quite close. Obviously, by the time we've got insulation on there as well, it'll be very close, and it could t it could drip down in. So we need to try and uh, protect ourselves from that. Um, also, what we're going to do, and it's where we're going to start, is we're going to put uh, putty on the back of the board. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to putty all round the back of the board, round the back of the um, uh, the dim slots, pretty much cover most of the the back of the board in this thin layer of putty. Uh, but then, what I'm going to do uh, is put the back plate on and put the poke the uh, rods through for the support of the pot, which is here. So I would mount it. We're going to do the back first, get the back plate on, flip it over, mount the back plate properly, um, and then we'll be able to start putting all the putty around the other side. But if we start doing it now, like I said, any uh, air bubbles uh, means that you could technically have um, uh, dew or condensation, or whatever you call it, form. So what we need to do is make sure that it's forced in everywhere. Now, when you've pushed it in, you can pull it back and see whether you've got it in everywhere because it will make a lovely little indentation like that so if we look at that we can pretty much tell we've got it everywhere that, that time uh, I mean I wouldn't suggest that you do have to pull it off and on every time but if you are in doubt that's what you can do now by doing it I've, pretty, I've got too much on this really because I want it to be roughly level for this part, because obviously we're going to have the back plate on. So you push as much in as possible. I'll go over the top of the whole bracket ever so slightly. But really, all I needed was it up to and kind of on the bracket I think. Like I've tried to say, I don't pretend to be any kind of, you know, expert on this. I've had to seek a lot of advice from my friends on MSN and looking at guides, pretty much just like any um first time sub zero venture would. Could have made this a lot easier if I'd use electrical tape, but obviously I want to keep the board in good condition for use later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn the camera off now. I'm going to get on with uh, the back. I'll show you quickly, and then we'll flip the board over and do the front.
Right then guys, we've got the uh, back plate uh, on, we've got all the putty on, or as much as I'm going to put on, in and around. Basically what all we need to do now is spin it over. Which I'm going to do with you on the camera, could it go badly off? Good, uh, not too bad, there we go. Right, now it's time, if I spin it round, I'm going to get it comfortable on the box. Now it's time for us to start putting lots of uh, the putty all in and around everything on the board. And basically the reason why I put the uh, rod through first is because it was a, it would have been a lot easier to have put the rod through that time than trying to push it through all the putty that would have been there afterwards. And also, at least this way, once it's all in there, it's all completely covered. And then eventually what we'll end up with is the pot on there like that. And then we'll put the back plate on, which I'm just gonna slide it on for now, but you'll get the idea. Then you have the, the hold down plate is on there as well. I'll clip this up a little bit so you can see. There we go. So you have the hold down plate on there. But what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on the carrying on the putty now. Now what I need to continue doing is putting all the putty all in and around. Building up the edges like I said. Uh, trying to make sure that the putty is built up right the way around all the socket. So I've got a lot to do. Uh, I'm not going to bore you by sticking all the putty on with you on the camera with me. I'm just going to get on with kneading this so it's all nice and warm. Uh, and uh, we'll cut off the camera for a little bit and we'll come back when I've done this. Uh, and I'll get, get the camera off the tripod and give you a good look. Um, but yeah, really not as quick and as simple as you'd think, is it? Anyway, I, like I said, I'm going to uh, get straight on with this. And I'll be back and talk to you in a second. Right then guys, the next stage is just about finished. I need to do a little bit more going around, trying to smooth out the edges on this, but essentially that's it uh, done now. Um, and basically all I have to do now, yet another courier van pulling up outside, brilliant. Um, all I need to do now is get the uh, pop done on, and then we fit the neoprene over the top. What I'm also going to do is put uh, Vaseline around the bottom of the uh, neoprene to try and seal any edges in. I'm also going to put a little bit around the very base of the pot as well, just so, you know, what I mean, just for a little bit more security. And then basically the clamp goes over the top like that, and then we'll be ready for dice. I may even put like a um, uh, like a tea towel or a rag or something around the outside as well. Just because I'm trying to be extra, extra careful because I've never really done this before. But basically you can see there what we've got to work with. Um, also I need to maybe little push down a little bit more around the edge. Um, where the uh, pace is slightly raised up. Basically this is as good as we're going to get it. Or near enough as good as we're going to get it now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this on the uh, test bench, get the get it all bolted in, um, uh, do the final little bits with the Vaseline and the um, uh, pot ready for tomorrow, and then pretty much as soon as the dice arrives tomorrow, I'll be able to uh, get cracking. The only thing that I need to do now is get myself some. Um, what do I need to get myself some of? I need to get myself some uh, acetone because so we're going to put acetone in the bottom to suspend the dice in. Um, I have purposely not put the little mounts on the bottom, and these are, you know, slightly wobbly just so that I've um, I've got a bit of flex and stuff because I was a bit worried about the neoprene and where the um, uh, where the pot would sit. So where I didn't know, and like I said, where I've not done this before, I've just left it. So I've got a bit more, but once I've got it fitted, I'll make sure all the uh, um, putty and everything is pressed right down. Um, and then yeah, tomorrow is the big day. The 980X, which is what's sat in there at the moment, it's my uh, original engineering sample 980X I got for review when they were first released. It's going to be going sub-zero and getting some crazy voltage pushed through it. Um, I've never put more than 1.5 volt for it on air and that was literally a suicide run, just a quick burst, uh, just to see what I could get. Um, 
but tomorrow I wouldn't, well, 1.6, 1.7 volts, maybe up a little bit further than 1.7, depends how we get on. Um, but yeah, big day, big day tomorrow, I'm absolutely bricking it. Um, so keep an eye on YouTube later on in the week because there will be more videos. Only time will tell whether something dies or whether we get some awesome results. Uh, I'm not, you know, saying that I'm going to get any, you know, where close to the people that do this for a living or would call themselves professional overclockers, but this is just my, uh, you know, first journey with sub zero overclocking and to see how far I can get with it. Um, so yeah, only time will tell to see whether I've got a good chip, whether the board's amazing, whether something's going to die, or will everything just fall into place and we get some cracking overclocks. Now that the uh, all the putty's on and the CPU's in there, I very, very much doubt, because if you have a look, you can see how close everything is, I very, very much doubt whether I'm going to be pulling all of that off and putting the 990 in there. Um, so I think we're just going to try our very, very best with the 980 and see what this chip's got to offer. But, yeah, this is a, a very different video from me, really. I doubt whether you would have expected we were going to be doing this anytime soon, but this is uh, the end of this segment of the video, peeps. Tomorrow we will be getting um, ready to uh, start chucking some dice at this rig. Right guys, quick update, it's all on there now. Basically at the bottom of the dice pot I've actually got some of this blue cloth stuff wrapped around so I didn't have any neoprene. And I've also, right at the very bottom, got a layer of, uh, well quite a few layers of paper towel uh, so that if we do get any drips and runs, alright it's not going to um, go through the uh, putty but hopefully the paper towel should soak it all up and hopefully make things that little bit safer as you can see we've still got all the putty underneath underneath here there is a load of uh, blue towel in the uh, gap between the dice pot and the outside of the neoprene on the outside and that's pretty much it I just wanted to give you a quick update before I make myself a cup of tea and have some dinner and then yeah it's just the big wait now for the dice tomorrow morning